with the uh, crisis in Ethiopia that uh, you started this last week? It was a drought. December of 83. Yeah. Sorry? It's fine. Yeah. It's live. Why is it live? Yeah. It's live. Yeah. I'm not ready to be famous. Can you pause it for a second or you can't pause it? No. How many followers do you have? Okay, I'll just start with you, Mr. Hanu. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, it's a really a very great pleasure to welcome Dr. Hanu Banna to uh, Cambridge uh, Muslim College uh, today, who's going to speak to you about um, uh, leadership and how to get through challenges um, when you uh, are in a situation of leadership. Anybody wishing to step forward and stand up? can quite easily say, well, okay, I'm ready to be a leader, I'm ready to do whatever is required. And then usually within a very quick uh, period of time, you know, one is faced with challenges. And anybody who wishes to take on what Allah gives them, the situation of taking on the position of leadership, then um, they will face challenges. And Dr. Hani, um, may Allah bless him, has faced many challenges uh, throughout his life. And... He has uh, led Islamic Relief uh, from the front and made it into one of the largest uh, Muslim charities uh, in the world today. So its uh, kind of annual turnover is over 100 million now. And it began in 1983 uh, when Dr. Hani, who's a medically trained doctor, uh, decided to give up his medicine and uh, focus on raising money for the people around the world after the uh, drought in uh, Eritrea in 1983. So. Um, I've, I've invited Dr. Hani a while ago. I'm very grateful that uh, you've uh, come to uh, CMC to speak to us today. It's the privilege of our students. And I'll hand you over to uh, Dr. Hani. Thank you. Thank you. Alhamdulillah, Ustaz Sama Rasulullah. And uh, before I talk about challenges that I faced, I have got four drawings for you to think about it. Because if you want to become a leader, you have to think outside your brain. Your brain is a big box. And you have to go to my brain to see what I have inside my brain. Say yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> One. Two, you keep looking at these and think, what are they? Right? At the back, at the back of the thing is, is writing which does not have anything to do with it. All right, this is the first challenge for you. Because it's not about somebody coming to listen to a lecture. We had enough of this. Of lectures, bayan, reminders, advice, mawaiza. But today we need to see how can we make the action, not activity. Activity is like a fundraising dinner, like making, uh, organizing football match, but action when you change the community towards a different direction. Keep it going. Yeah. So you have got four drawing with you and you have to tell me in five minutes what are they. I discovered at my age, how old I am now? You're really young. How old? 21, 23, 25, 26? 25. 25. <laughs> at my age, my, my daughter is older than me. <laughs> I started to do the drawing. This is all my drawing. Okay? But actually, it's not a joke. Brother who are smiling at it, I have to give the answer or I will grill somebody. I always, I always get the people to the front to be grilled, roasted, 
Sometimes we'll boil them. You got it? Which one you want? To be boiled or grilled or roasted or fried? Is there anything else on the menu? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So leadership is not about some, body, some books that you read. Okay? It's an experience to have through your own activity, driving your own activity, or through people who gone through it before. Plus the reading ability and the history books. So you have to have your hand and feet rolling up your sleeves and trousers to be in the middle of the community to become a leader. Okay? You have to have your hands and feet dirty. You have to have the suffering of any problem affecting the community to feel the agony. This is the leadership. You can't talk about the community if you don't feel their agony. And if you don't address their dreams. And if you don't draw their future. Can't be a leader because your father is a sheikh or a leader of a Sufi tariqa or a political party or a king or a queen. So what? Absolutely so what? Leadership is not an inheritance by the family, it is something to be given to you as a respect from the community that who trust you. If the community do not trust you, you will never become a leader. Never ever become a leader. The trust of those little ones, children, women and men in the community makes you a leader. But you can't become a leader unless you are a servant. Unless you are what? A servant. A servant. The one who is a good servant will be chosen by the community to become their leader. If you are not a servant, for me, you are dead meat. Smells in a few hours. No matter who you are, no matter what education you have, no matter what family background you have, wealth or whatever it is, it is a service. The deliverable of the service. You deliver a service that the community needs. You fulfill the dreams that the community is talking about. How can you become a leader without addressing every issue that affects every citizen in the community. It's not an election. It's not voting. Only. It's a process. The election is a process. But the real test is when you are in the shanty town, when you are with the most marginalized, when you are with the oppressed, when you are with the poor, when you are with the underprivileged, and they ask you, if they ask you, this is the first sign of you becoming a leader. If they don't ask you, no matter who you are, you are not a leader. When those people start asking you questions, that mean that you want their trust. Leadership is about a trust. It's about your Clarity of your intention, of my intention. If my intention is not clear and bad, I will fool you once or twice. But later on, you will understand and you will feel from the tune of my voice that I'm a crook. I'm a liar. I'm a hypocrite. I'm a double-faced. And this is about how to be received by each and every member of the community. Any answer for the drawing? <clears throat> First challenge. <clears throat> you are in Cambridge. High place. Very expensive town. 
and all this investment in your brains give me something back. Um, so I thought it was the plan of a sort of village. Which one you saw, sir? So it was like a, some circles. All circles around us. <laughs> okay, get, 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 get me. I will, I, the other one behind. So which one of them you're talking about? Uh, this one. This is a plan. That's you. Anybody else saw it? Yes? Football. Football. Very good. I love you. I say I love you too. Three, four. Anybody else? Arba Mazah. Arba Four, four schools of thought. <laughs> Very good. Anybody else? Same. Okay. Now we have the answers. Who saw this one? Tree. 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 How does the tree look like? Huh? Looks like, that. looks like that. Okay, this way. Tree, you are closer. This one, is yours. Or this one? It was actually the other one, but... Which other one? The this one, okay, fine. The football. <laughs> Huh? A, park. a park, very good. Yeah, Green park and the pink park. <laughs> pink panther. I thought when I first saw this, I thought um, of a peacock. I don't know why. Peacock, okay, why not? <laughs> no problem. Kaaba. Kaaba, Kaaba. Allahu Akbar. And where are you from? I'm from Morocco. Morocco, you have Kaaba there? No. <laughs> <laughs> now we'll have Kaaba everywhere. <laughs> All right, very good. All right. This one is a tree. Reflects my country. Which is not fruitful tree. There's no leaves. There's no fruits. With the land is yellow. With some spikes coming out of it. And but the rest of the land is green. Because they have a government was corrupt. Not, uh, not utilizing the rest of the resources of the country. This one, let us we'll start with this. See, greenery, this is another state. The government in the middle, and the greenery means this is a healthy society, but still some sickness in the orange and the pink. They're structured. Democratic or Shura government, which managed to utilize the resources of the country, utilizing everything in the country. This was another country of a different government. The pink color means that paralysis. The orange is disability, and the green is healthy. A good dictatorship state, the middle here. None of them is Kaaba, by the way, huh? <laughs> and actually making the country paralyzed because of the lack of freedom. What's the other one? And this we can call it fragile state. This is fragile. This one is a failing state. The central government is here. But because the central government is very weak, there's government... In different, if Somalia and other countries, you find pockets here and there. All right? This is a challenge. If you want to become a leader, you have to diversify your thoughts. You have to expose yourself to different challenges. And you have to listen to the people who might not be learned enough. I was in Ethiopia since you mentioned that Ethiopia is the oldest country on earth. Two years ago, organizing a workshop for the World Humanitarian Summit there. And I learned something from somebody there, a farmer or a pastoralist and shepherd. You know what he told me? He told me in our, country, in our area, we look at this before we started to talk about the early warning system. 
early warning system. In tsunami, everybody talked about early warning system because nobody expected a tsunami to happen. He told me, when we look at the color of the skin, at the color of the hair, we discover that within three hours, if we don't leave the area, we'll be stuck there because the wind is blowing heavily coming from this direction or this direction or this direction. This man or this woman, when you look at them, oh my God, why should I sit down with those people? Because they might not have shoes or a slipper. They might have just very old clothes wearing. This is what exactly happened in Sudan, in Darfur. They were undermining the village or the sultan, the, the village leader, or the sultan or the sheikh of the, of the tribe. And some of the UN young boys and girls did not understand the value of somebody at this age who looked miserable. They don't talk to them. That's why they failed in quite a few projects. Till they came back to the leadership of such a man who look miserable. This is the leadership. You go where you can find the way. And what you call it, instinct, whatever you call it, means it's linked to your heart. And it's linked to Allah, the provider. I will direct you, tell you, go to this direction. Don't go to this direction. The guidance at the end of the day will coming from Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we started, as Atif wanted me to talk about the history, 34 years ago. Nobody had a plan. Take it for me. Nobody had any plan. Nobody had any budget. No one of us has what we talk about now about strategy, structure, budget, accountability, Governance, all these big fat words have nothing to do. When we saw the famine in 1983, we found that we need to do something. I was a medical student doing my, my doctor of medicine at Birmingham University, and I've got my colleague was doing his PhD in chemistry. What we did after visiting Sudan and coming back and discovered that we need to do something, we opened the bank account. I raised some money from my family in Cairo, 1,500 Egyptian pounds at that time. 20 pence of them was the best and most precious from a young boy. Okay? He gave me 20 pence, his chocolate money. Then I went to ask the university for Juma, khutbah, fundraising. Another one asked in Birmingham University, where is about 500 pounds. And with this big amount of money at that time, we opened the bank account. This is how it started. No address, no desk, no employees, nothing. Nothing whatsoever. All right? But what we did, Ihsan and myself, is going from street to street, from door to door, from shop to shop, from function to function, to distribute leaflets. While we were doing our doctor of medicine and the PhD in science. Both of us have children. Both of us, of course, we were married. Is it, can I have children without getting married? <laughs> can I? No. No. I have to write an answer. Yes or no? Nothing to do with legal or not. <laughs> yes or no? Or nays. Can you call it nays? A new, a new English word, I invented it. Because I'm a leader. Oh. I have to invent nes. <laughs> Means yes and no. <laughs> Just be, um, active. Get them outside the box. They have got their own box, let them get out. <laughs> nes, huh? It's a new word. Put it in Oxford Dictionary. <laughs> what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. Wait, what was I talking about? <laughs> and, <laughs> huh? You were married and you had kids. Ah, oh, yeah. And both of them, <laughs> both of us, not with them, have married, uh, have married, uh, we're married, we're married with children. And both of us, alhamdulillah, got the degree. So our social work did not delay our success in our career. Take it for granted. You think that 
you do something for Allah as a favor and he will look at you not giving you something back? Definitely not. Definitely not. Definitely not. That's why both of us, alhamdulillah, got the degree at that time. We never thought that the organization would become as it is now, as Atif mentioned. But one of the, since you are students, one of the greatest angle that I'd like to mention is during the famine, no, not the famine, during the flood in Bangladesh in 1991. I think most of you were not born or just... Uh, 91? Yeah, yeah. Yes, you're still. No, no, no. None of you were born at that time. Especially the girls. The boys were being born a long time ago. But all the girls have not been born in 91. Maybe 99. You are, you are actually agreeing with me, huh? <laughs> okay? At that time, I failed my, my, my MD. And it's a major failure. In PhD, major failure means that either you do it or you are out. And I was told by the, by the professor at the Dean of the Royal College of Pathologist, you have to finish it in one year. I said, okay. The flood came. I went to all the people that I know that they are attending circles, Islamic circles, please go, go, go. Because anybody from Bradford here? Only two. I said, that's disgrace. It must be 50% from Bradford, the Republic of Bradford, in the center of the kingdom of UK. Okay, and two, two young people raised about 30,000 pounds at that time, and British Airways want to give us two first-class tickets. This was July, and they were supposed to be submitting my thesis before November. Challenge. For nearly a few weeks, of, I was going around, around, and around, and nobody wants to go. You know what I have done? I decided that I have to drop my thesis and go. That was one of the Fridays. I can't remember when. Sometime in July. On the same day, to be very honest, and this is for you as students, I went to my office and I sat down in the evening after Jum'ah prayer in the evening, Birmingham University, and I looked at the same data, the same data which I have for the five years, six years before, which was there with me. And I started to play with it. And I found myself be able to produce a new hypothesis, a new theory. And they looked at it, the growth of the bone in the back, the neck and the back, and the growth of the spinal cord, and the difference between the growth rate. And I wrote it in a piece of paper, and they went without knowing that I have discovered something new for the hypothesis of the disease that I was working on. And when I went to my supervisor, he looked at it, he told me, yes, honey, it makes sense, put it in the thesis. This never came back to me as an idea before I decided to put my personal interest, which is the thesis, on one side, and to go to the public interest, which is Bangladesh, on the other side. Only when I decided with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to prioritize Bangladesh to my thesis, Allah told me, come on, take this. You have this information that you have, but you never discover it. Now I give it to you as a token of appreciation. As a token of appreciation. Once in my thesis, I was trying to do something about uh, the infection which affects the, the heart, the, the, the lung of the baby, pneumonia, the quote pneumonia, when he is in the womb of his mother or her mother. And they collect about 50, 60 cases. Then by mistake, I put the trolley on one side and went home only also on Friday. That's Friday phenomena or fly, Friday syndrome. And they went home Friday and the, 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 the trolley went this side. When I came back, on Saturday, on, on Monday, I asked for the trolley with the 50 or 60 jars, nearly two years' work. It's not there, been thrown out. I was mad. 
But Allah opened my eyes to go to the storehouse to get about three or four hundred bodies to start to cut it. So it was a good news for me. Instead of having one hundred bodies to examine, I have three hundred and fifty bodies to examine. So, but Allah gave this to you. Huh? You think it's a challenge, but this is talking of appreciation. Challenge inside Islamic relief. Once upon a time, we were going to close down in mid-90s because we didn't have any money. You think that Islamic relief now have got 100 million or 200 million, 300 million? No, 95 was, a, was not a good year because of our bad management. Bad management of who? Of this man. You know him? Standing in front of you. But we decided, each one of us, especially in the field, to not to take the salary for six months. To maintain the expenditure. Because if any shaking happened to the organization, and people outside know that, it will drop dead. 95 was very, very, very small at that time. So most of our field workers took the challenge. No salaries, we are going to live from our savings. For a mistake that somebody like myself have done, over, exp over a expenditure. Don't think that every, all these people tell you that, tell me your legacy. But inside your legacy, there's a lot of failure. Nobody wants to talk about. We have to tell our people or our youngster that is not success all the way. There's ups and downs. 95, we need your closing down because we have no money in the bank. But the great people of the organization who are in Albania and Sudan and others, they said we are going to survive from our saving till we sort the financial problem out. But we have to learn from the mistake of the leadership. Okay? If we want to contain them as leaders. So there's a lot of stories happening. Actually, I talked about the best example. What time is it now? Because of, uh, oh, still, I said another five minutes and they'll give you the platform. One of the greatest experience that I had uh, in, uh, in, in Pakistan. Yeah, Pakistan. I always mention this story. When we were actually coming from, uh, from Afghanistan by car to Haran, Haran, is it right? The border? Khyber, Khyber, Khyber uh, what do you call it? Khyber Pass? To KPK nowadays? To Islamabad? To go to Kashmir? In one day. I'm not joking. It's, it's about 18, 20 hours drive. I was in the car with uh, two, two, uh, two of my brothers. One is Adnan Shima. May Allah bless him now. He's working for the United Nations. And the other one was the driver. And on the mountains, you, some, of, some, some of you said that you are from Kashmir. On the mountain there, we found a very old man standing in the middle of the road. We stopped. We thought that he wants some money. That he wants what? Money. Some money. And Adnan came out with 500 rubies. The man said, ah, 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 ah. He was dumb. Does not listen. Does not speak. What do, what do you want? He wanted a lift. So we took him with us. I was in the front seat. And he was in the back seat. And because of the smell he has of the sweat, as a relief worker claiming that I am a champion, I can get lost. Claiming that I serve people, get lost. Claiming, claiming, claiming that I feel the pain and agony of people, get lost. I could not be able to stand the smell of his sweat. I remember this exactly. That means that I'm not good enough to stand as his servant. We have to open all the windows. But with a failure on our terbiya system. Because we could not be able to stand the smell of a sweat of a man. 
for five minutes. Then the most precious smile I have ever seen came from his face, which means thank you. I never saw a smile like this in all my life. And if I meet this man on the day of judgment, I hope that he will stand for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and tell him, and Allah knows, that they give me a lift on such a date when I was in Kashmir. I want to take a photograph with him, but he vanished when we stopped the car. Anyway, those people that we fail to be able to stand next to them because they are smelly are the keys for heaven, are the protector from her fire, are the protector of your children and your family and your wealth and your health. They are. They are if they stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at such a day, a mighty day, there's nobody can stand and save me. And say, Allah, no. Leave him. And Allah knows. Like the children who stand, the orphans that you sponsor, the widows that you sponsor, the displaced that you sponsor, that you disable that they sponsor. The elderly, the sick that you sponsor, will stand for Allah and Allah knows, no Allah, no Allah, they helped us. Let them to make us leaders. Leadership is not, as I said, inheritance from somebody. It is a respect and it is a nomination by the community who trust each and every one of us because they see us bending our back, spending our money and effort and our time to serve them, not for a stage photograph, but for real service. That's why I come back Tell the king, tell the president, tell the queen, tell the prime minister, tell the minister that you are a servant. And you pose on it. You can't be a king unless you serve. Can't be a president unless you serve. Can't be a prime minister unless you serve. It's not the quality of fake politics nowadays who can fool people for an election, then after that you can do whatever you want. Or I can do whatever I want. This is what I can look at leadership from somebody who are not qualified enough, or not academia like all of you, or not learned enough like most of you, okay? But he learned from the street. And some of our, my best good days is when I was with young Muslims. And Atif was my leader. Is that right, sir? Yeah. What do I, I, didn't, I didn't hear what you say. Either say it loudly or I take you to court. <laughs> okay. I learned a lot from them. I loved being to be with the young generation. To strengthen my back. To widen my vision, to deepen my thought, and to clarify my direction. And they did that to me. So if Atif said anything about me today, it is because of the good old days of learning what they taught me to have at that time. That's why I'm still standing on my feet in front of you, because of the lessons learned from my relationship with them. Now I've got about 20 minutes to go. I will leave it for question and answer. Ask any question you want. Whether I think it, oh, shall I make him sweat? Yes, make me sweat. Why not? Shall I make him angry? Yes, make him angry. Why not? Shall I slap him on the face? Yes, slap him on the face. Why not? Who can start the first slapping? You. First question, you, sir. Come here, come here, come here. 
I like smiling faces. Come on, come on. Come with me, yes? That, that's my talk. It's about you. What is the question? Um. <laughs> oh, we'll cover as well. Great. <laughs> um, um. Someone going to help me out with the question. Throw any stupid question or any intelligent question or any question you don't think about it. I swear you've been spotted by any member of the community when you are a leader to ask you the question that you're not prepared to answer. <clears throat> don't think that because you are a leader all the question will be given to you before the session. No, anybody who stand like, like he's a leader now. Right now? No, I'm student now. The carry on. No, 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 no. You are on the stage of the leadership and any community member will stop you screaming and crying in front of your face and telling you so, 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 so. You'll be able to respond back. What's your question? Um, so when a lot of people think about charities, there's a general misconception of, I don't uh, know, about where the, where the finances go. Very good. A lot of people are very skeptic. Very of, good. Uh, uh, people who run charities keeping a lot of money for themselves. Very good. The money going in their own pockets. So if, Very good. If someone is going to ask you that, how no problem. You? No problem. Any any more difficult one? No, no that's that's, that's enough. Okay. Jazakallah khair. You cannot yes. You cannot run a business without money. And I'm saying it again hundreds and million times. Whoever tell you free admin, zero admin, they are liars. Absolute liars. Up and take it from me and see me around if you want to have a challenge in the road. <laughs> okay? There is nothing called zero percent whatsoever. It's a fundraising PR tool. Okay? Why? Because even if I sponsor your salary, even if I sponsor paying the electricity, even if I sponsor paying the gas, okay? This is donation, not counted in the income of the organization. Even if I use the gift aid money to pay the salaries, this is fake. Because your pound is one pound. But when I claim that 28 pence, it becomes 128 pence. This is a donation from you. Some people trying to claim that is, this is the, uh, they are not actually, uh, 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 what do you call it, to, to cover the, the cost. There's a cost. Don't come and tell me that you want your one pound to go 100% into the mouth of a child in the middle of Kashmir or Bosnia or Ghana or Niger or China or whatever. It will never happen. You have even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even Allah in the eight categories of zakah, there's one of them called al amluna alayha. Allah said amluna alayha because he understand subhanahu wa ta'ala that this structure will be complicated by the time from the one layer and flat community into the multiple layer complex multi-dimensional community at the time of Omar at the time of Abu Bakr they were actually employing somebody to collect the zakat this is cost that means that the 100% of the zakat money were not reaching it has to be paid okay there are some areas, brothers and sisters, which the, 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 the admin is not 5%. Take, take this statement from me. No international program, cross-board, will be less than 15 to 20% admin. And if you want to see me, see me around. Huh? Bring him. Huh? You come with him. Sure. Don't fool yourself. We have to pay it. We have to safeguard the millions by spending the thousands or the hundreds of thousands to maintain the expenditure right. I tell you something. In the good old days, 
after the Bosnia war. Because we were dealing with some governments who thought that the, our quality standard of finance and reporting was not to the standard. So we invested heavily in employing highly qualified huh, accountants and financers. It was to protect the organization and to safeguard the spending of the money. I cannot let anybody who is a clerk huh, to manage or to guide or to record this huge amount of money coming to us. This was happening by organization. If you tell me why you are for buying four-wheel drive cars in Afghanistan, or in Kashmir, or in certain countries of Africa. I tell you because I cannot walk it, or I cannot use the ordinary car. And if you want to reach the top of the mountain, it has to have to be four wheel. See? In Afghanistan, during the war in 2002 or 2001, we used to send the aid material on the, by donkeys. Only the donkey can take about 25 to 40 kilos. You can imagine how many donkeys were actually used as relief workers. It costs money. I hire a donkey. I buy the food. I buy a camel. Or buy, 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 buy. So nothing. When you come and tell me, come and work for free. Now I can work for free for charity because I have my what, uh, pension. Is it, uh, I'm retired. I have my income. Alhamdulillah. But when I'm a young man like you, I want to get married. Charity work is becoming a profession. A profession. Like medicine, like engineering, like accounting, like, like all this. But we still look at the charity work as, yeah, uh, yeah, if you are in a mosque, but even inside the mosque, if you are not employing the proper people to look at the money, expenditure and fundraising, you lose the money. And we discover one or two people was every week was actually uh, taking 50 pounds or 100 pounds from the cash donation. The system of the mosque has been changed. Okay? So you have to balance the expenditure, brother. Thank you for the question. But there's nothing called admin free or zero admin. This is the first question. Second, oh, you are excited now. Okay, sir. That's what I'm saying. It's nothing to say one size fits all. It depends on even if your work is on the local ground, in a village, in a town, on a district, or national level, or global. And for each location, the admin will be different. If I'm running a mosque now, I can expect that the people around the area will be all volunteers. But at the same time, I need to get somebody, one or two or three workers, to clean up. And so I'm, I'm not asking to give you the mosque 20 or 30 percent. No way. But my go to from 2 to 3 to 4 percent. Because electricity, because of water, because of all this... Uh, but when you go on the, on, on the level of a, of, of, of a national level, like on UK, you might have some offices in London and Birmingham and Manchester and Leeds and others. Of course, you employ people. If you, if you, talk, if you, if you work with the uh, with disabled, if you work with the uh, uh, elderly, if you work with the sick, if even if you work with the dogs and the cats and other, of course, you have to run this operation. Okay. This may go from 10 to 15%. When you go outside UK, you have a different cause because you establish an operation in this country, in this country, and this country, and the reporting mechanism, that's what goes beyond 15%. Sometimes people minimize. In certain projects, it might go to 50%, just to shock you. In, in areas where there is actually uh, no go area for it, like it was in South Sudan, I keep example, mentioning this example many times. When it trained in South, it trained in South Sudan, for months, no transportation, because of actually there's no proper road structure. For this few months, there was airdrop. Okay, how much is the cost of the airdrop? 
to save the lives of the people who are stranded there for six or four or five months. So it's not, it's not one size fits all. You see, if you get, if you get in Sudan, the, 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 good, uh, the good material, the, the, the aid material in Port Sudan, and you want to send it to Darfur, it took about nearly 1,500 kilometer transportation. There's a law. That's why quite often your donor said, I'm going to give you this, and I'm not going to be interested in transportation. Where I am going or how I am going to pay the money to get this from Port Sudan into Al Jinina in west of Sudan. Cost. There's nothing for free. Zakallah. But there, there, there's no one size fits all. Yes, come on, because I want the people to see you. Come on, come on, you are a leader now. And tell me your worry. The first, the first brother, what was, his, what was your name? Zain al Abidin, the, the son of uh, Hazrat Ali. Alayhi salam. I love you. <laughs> and you? Uh, Hassanin Ali. Not, not one Hassan. Two Hassans. <laughs> Two Hassans. Hassanin no. Ali again. No. Alayhi salam. <laughs> Uh, so, two questions. First one, um, what projects does Islamic Relief specifically um, like invest in that help people actually help themselves? And secondly, what projects are they um, involved in that like preempt the problems of tomorrow rather than like uh, just kind of sorting out the problems of today? Because it seems like a lot of companies, the uh, charity sector and non-charity sector, they're kind of um, looking at problems and by the time they've sorted out solutions, the problems kind of escalated and changed and evolved. So rather than preempting problems today, what like what money and resources are being invested in preempting problems that emerge tomorrow? The first question. What was the first question? Um, so engaging. Because Hassanin has to give two questions. <laughs> <laughs> one for Hassan Ali. The second one for Hassan Ali. <laughs> um, so what projects are they engaged in that help people help themselves? So yeah. rather than just giving people money and handouts. The, this is started in the mid nineties in Bangladesh. Anybody from Bangladesh? No. Hmm. So you can ask it down. Hmm? <laughs> no, no, you see, people are looking at you. <laughs> That's the problem. W- wave to them, wave to them. These people are <laughs> Okay. So the first one we start to think about it was a microfinance or livelihood by buying rickshaw or buying uh, fishing nets or buying uh, mini tractors and so on and so on. It's developing. It's still developing up to now. We have a, well, Islamic Thief has a company in Bosnia, and another one in uh, Kosovo, and an independent one in Pakistan to deal with the loans to the people, to give them this kind of independence. Okay, it has started as a process more than 25 years ago, and still going on, on how much the donor believe in it. Unfortunately, our donors, brothers and sisters, believe in the color of the blood the screams of the children and the destruction. They pay much money for relief operation, but they don't pay money to build the community. Okay. To preempt any, any, anything, it needs us to invest in one or two or three areas. First of all, the independence of the organization for making it is right decision, which is waqf which is waqf, which is waqf. If you become independent, tell the community to donate for waqf. If I can tell you that Harvard waqf or uh, endowment is more nearly $40 billion. Okay? And Harvard University, I don't know how many, how, more than 100 years, whatever it is, it's definitely less than 200 years. But $40 billion the least of reward from this $40 billion could be how much? $50 million, $100 million, $200 million. With this independent money, they can make their policy sound and clear. Waqf is very important because it will give you free thinking. It will give you this kind of stability, number one. Number two is invest and invest and invest and invest in local community. Don't make your organization to be a colonial organization. Colonial is 
top-down approach. But let the local workers, the local citizens, drive your organization in the smaller and remote, most remote areas of Kashmir and Bangladesh and, 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 and. Okay, because from among them, they will get future leaders to enable them to lead their community and preempt all these problems. Third one is what the college is doing is today. The young generation who become qualified, invest in your youth, in your own country. From within these youth groups, you will be able to get the future leaders as well. So I talked about waqf. I talked about investment, investing in the local community. I talked about you here in UK to invest in the young people. Because they are more dynamic than myself. Now I can walk with a walking stick. But you can jump high and run 50 miles an hour or 20 miles an hour or 5, or five miles an hour. For me, I cannot do it. Without you, I cannot reach faster. And without me, you can get lost. Because you must go to the wrong direction. Okay? I've got five minutes to go. Both of you come forward. No sisters? Want to... ah, I, I give sister first. But one sister first, then, then you. Okay, yell. Um, so, my question is about um, community leadership. Yeah. Um, how do you maintain being motivated and active in the community without losing yourself in the midst of challenges and, or even being burnt out by the community? If you want to be motivated, be all the time with the community. If you want to be motivated, be all the time with the needy. If you want to be motivated, be all the time in the middle of the scene itself. Don't sit at home or in an office and talk about them. Be with them. And they inspire you. They will charge your soul. They will lift your moral up. And they will shape your character. This is if you want to be motivated. Go and see how much you are blessed. And how much they are underprivileged. Here the motivation will come to you. To not come to you only from a speech, but from the feeling and the respect of the people that you are with at that time. Keep visiting them. Keep visiting them. Keep listening to them. Keep learning from them. You want to say? No? Two brothers, the last two questions. Come on. Ah, Morocco. Morocco and Bangladesh or Morocco and Go. I got three minutes to go. Come on. Come on, take a taxi. Uber, Uber, Uber. Uh, talk to the camera. Give them your name. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum uh, There's somebody inside. I want to ask you a question um, in relation to the, the point that you raised earlier that we should invest in our own um, local community and yeah. the problems that are going on here. Uh, so last year, um, I did some research with a few people, and I found out that um, 2.7 billion million pounds are being sent every year from the UK into a small into a state in India uh, to build, um, you know, for and that money is better off used here in the UK. How do we then go ahead and persuade uh, the, yeah, the yeah. people? Sh- from Sh- out? Well, there's a black uh, green. No, no, this one. Give, give me this one. This one. This 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 small bag behind you. Raksak. No, 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 no. Give me the raksak, yeah. Yeah, carry on. Yeah. Priority. Uh, yeah, how do we Priority. persuade them? Yeah, persuade whom? The people who are sending this money back, back to these places because... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you want all the money to be spent in UK? At, at least a good amount of it. Yeah, okay, fine. I'll show you something. It's a drawing which I want you to both Brother Atif and you told me uh, it is not... Uh, okay. This is a question. What is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? It's supposed to be here. Look at this. What is this? Tent. I have to have a balance between what I spend inside the country and what I spend outside the country. Okay? I have to have a balance. Because there is a great need. In Syria, 
in Yemen, in Afghanistan, in Pakistan. That's right? And there's a need as well in UK. Let me address both of them. But don't say absolutely in or absolutely out. These are some of the projects which I want you to invest inside the country. This is a tent. Okay, this was a program as we were trying to design to one of the organizations. The, the, the pillar in the, in the middle is what? Is the family values. Build the family values in this country, which you quite often, I tell you something, your chemistry will work to get married tomorrow, but the same chemistry will work to let you divorce next year. Building a family is not a joke. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. Family values is when you and your wife build the community. That's why I put it to be in the middle. Okay? To, to hold all the domestic program in the country. Then you talk about the elderly, then you talk about uh, the disabled, then you talk about uh, the homeless, then you talk about the youth program, then you talk about the animal, then you talk about the climate, and so on, so on, so on, so on, so on. So on. But don't come, I'm not going to force you to spend all your money abroad, and you don't force me to spend all my money in the country. Have a balance. Have a balance. Because no matter what we say that we need a great, we have a great need in the country. Yes, we have. Yes, we need. But there's a greater need at the same time outside. So it is, you have to balance it with the board. 30 years ago, no, 20, 25 years ago, we said 30% of the cut money should be spent in the UK. Before anybody talked about how to spend the cut money. And to spend 30, 30% of the zakat to be spent in the country. Now you can say, tell me, make a program. What kind of project that you want to do? Okay? The community needs, there's elderly. What is the need of the old people who are sitting at home? I was nearly frozen in a house when I have central heating, when I have a blanket on my, on, on my, on my legs, when I have another heater during this a few, last few weeks. Tell me about this elderly man and the woman, whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims. They deserve to have their help, isn't it? At the same time, tell me about the people in Ghouta, in Syria, the people in Yemen, the people in Libya, the people in Sudan, the people in Africa. The people, they need. We need to create the balance between the expenditure and the needs, according to the needs. Well, they, they will say that those people are dying because... Well, I'm, not, I'm not saying 100% here. It's more important to give them the money. You see, what I'm saying, what I'm saying, I'm not saying 100% here and 100% here. I said, give me a portion according to your school of thoughts, and the value of needs here and there. If I can be, if I'll be able to take 5 or 10% from him, from this organization, I might take 20 or 30% from another organization. Okay? So it has to be balanced. Because if you talk about the real needs, there's countries without states. Countries without social welfare system. Countries are, you see, talk about 7 million displaced Syrian inside Syria. About six or seven, uh, uh, five, three, about six or seven million outside. Talk about the displaced inside Syria or in Yemen or whatever. I'm not saying 100%. Logically, discuss with the organization to spend some money in the country. Otherwise, otherwise, their organization will be like this. No fruits. Because you need to nurture the community that you are standing on. My suggestion is at least 20 to 30 percent of your income should be spent here. But, but, a big but, what is your donor is dictating the where the donation goes? Most of the donors in this country don't want to spend money in UK or in America because they said that we have a strong states. So, what do you want me to do? I go from the non restricted fund, which is very limited. No, even if I use all the non-restricted fund, it will not become 10%. So you see, you can catch 22. Right? Can I take a photograph for selfie? You see, you can just screenshot that, inshallah.
Oh, very good. <laughs> he knows it. <laughs> I think we have to keep moving, Brother Atif, because uh, can we move now? It's not here. Yeah, Because <laughs> we passed the three o'clock time. Huh? Yeah, okay. So can you come and bless us with your... your <laughs> you don't want to stand next to me? <laughs> I love you. <laughs> as, as, as being one of the students of Dr. Atif, I'm, I'm very privileged to be here under his auspices. Auspices? Is it right English? <laughs> the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Have you seen the movie? <laughs> Oz, not Oz. <laughs> Okay, Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.